Hey, we want to welcome today to Straight Talk. We're going to be sharing some pretty neat things today. We got these three guys. We're going to be talking about Calvary Chapel. Why Calvary Chapel exists because of the Word of God. We'll be right back. We're back here. We have uh, Wade, uh, Scott, and we have, what's your name? Sean over there. So, you know, I want to give a little bit of history that I think it's important that these guys came into, and that's Calvary Chapel. Uh, why is Calvary Chapel famous? You know, it's not really famous, but they say it's famous because of the Jesus People Movement. But what I want to say to you guys is when I went to Calvary Chapel, the only reason I went there, it wasn't the Jesus People Movement. It was the teaching of God's Word. You know, I wanted to learn God's Word, and I, I took my Bible there, and Chuck would open the Scriptures, and he would teach topically, in depth, and then he would go ahead and do some, some series that he would do. And, and for me, being with Jimmy Kepner and Greg Laurie and Don McLean, all these guys was a real blessing to me because I got to go to the first shepherd school. Jeff Johnson and Mike, uh, excuse me, Bill from Hawaii, we were all together, and we began to see a movement that was really God's movement. There's a lot of movements, but who moves those movements, you know? I think that uh, the Jesus people movement was something special in my life. That I really saw the teaching of God's Word. I saw people getting saved, really getting saved. You could come in on, off the freeway and get off on the harbor or wherever you get off, and you could see the tent and then also hear the Holy Spirit speak into your heart, which was really amazing to me. I never heard the Holy Spirit. But as I began to learn the book of John, I began to hear the voice of God speaking to me what He wanted to say to me. And you know how it was? It was through the Word of God. Through the Word of God. I began to read, for example, in 2 Timothy chapter uh, uh, chapter 2.16. He says, All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the men of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. When you look at churches today, I look at churches because I really want to know what they're doing. And I see them, they don't teach God's Word. And because they don't teach God's Word, they really don't have a church. You know, they entertain, they might as well go to a nightclub because they entertain and the kids get all excited about what's going on with the music and different things they do. But what happens when they go home? What happens throughout the week? You know, if they're not being taught God's Word, they don't read at home, they don't pray at home, you know, what are they going to be? Just like heathen kids. And Chuck taught us. I was 24 years old. Chuck taught us the teaching of God's Word. I would go home all week long I read the Bible. When I go to Calvary Chapel, the Word of God. When I come home, the Word of God. Everywhere I went in the 70s was the Word of God. And that's what brought me to the place that I am today. What about you, Wade? Yeah, I mean, you're, you're talking about something that is super important right now, especially in the days that we're living in. I think the last thing that the church needs today is another opinion. And um, that, I think that that has been the benefit. I mean, that's why I think Calvary Chapel's model has impacted so many lives, and it's because of the teaching of the Word of God. I, when, when I first got saved, that was, that was my desire. I just wanted to learn. I wanted to grow. I wanted to know His Word, and, and the Lord gave me a passion for His Word. And I think because of culture and a lot of things that have, are taking place in the world today, there's this temptation in the churches today to move away um, from the sufficiency of Scripture. But To move away? What do you mean by move away? Well, stop, tr stop trusting in the power of the Word of God because they think, well, we need to do things to, to match the culture or to reach the culture or to appeal to the culture. Um, Christianity is never going to be appealing to the culture. It's never going to be cool. It's always going to be against the grain. The Word of God is always going to convict the world of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment. And where, um, and so I, th I think a lot of younger pastors especially, and older pastors that are trying to be something that God hasn't called them to be, are, are give into this temptation of, of dumbing the message down 
to reach the culture. And as pastors, as teachers, we're supposed to lift the body of Christ up so that they can go and impact the world around them. And so the church is only as strong as the pulpit. And the most important thing in the church is the message that comes from the pulpit. And so when we start putting other things before the message, the church stops becoming effective. Yeah, I don't think you can go to church and sit. I couldn't do that, to sit and just hear the guy talk about Jesus. Yeah, you know, I mean, there has to be an expounding of the Word of God. There's been, so, I mean, a lot of pastors today are nothing more than like motivational speakers. Um, we live in an age with like Instagram and social media where everything is full of 15 second sound bites from, from pastors that are motivational speakers. And that's not what we've been called to do. We've been called to, to preach the word and to teach the word and to build up the body of Christ. I wonder how many pastors today would last, like back in the 60s, 70s, just teaching God's word. No media, no phone, no iPad, no, I mean, nothing like that electronically. And I think that's one of the problems today. Yeah. People don't spend time studying God's word. Because you start on your computer and you end up way south or way north, you know? And I think that there has to be concentration, not going through the internet looking for sermons. But what is God giving to you? Don't you believe that, Scott? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, I, I, I kind of pony up to what he was saying right now. It's like it's our culture in the sense that it's a very touchy-feely kind of a thing right now. And um, a lot of young people, you see it in our culture, you see it in the social media, is that everybody wants to be moved. They want to feel something. And the Word of God, if you teach it correctly, like that's one of the first things that got me was uh, hearing the teaching of the Word of God over at Calvary Chapel West Covina and then later on hearing Chuck's tapes. It's like you're moved by the Holy Spirit. Uh, the, 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 the minister, the preacher is moved by the Holy Spirit, and as he's teaching it, you're getting moved. But it's not an emotional thing. It's like more of like a conviction thing. Mm -hmm. And today, people don't want to be convicted. Yeah. They, want to, they want to feel good. Right. That's why the worship has to be a certain way and they want a, a message that really appeals to their feelings right now. Like I was talking to somebody actually yesterday about a group of young people that went here and, and they've left and went to another church, but it's because of that. They want mm -hmm. the seeker feel they want the seeker friendly thing. Mm -hmm. And the person that went with them goes, I got nothing out of that. I'm never going to that church again because I want to like know that God is speaking to me, not like I want to feel good about yeah. my sin. And so the word of God, you know, like the way Chuck taught us, it was taken out of Isaiah. I'm going to read right. it to you really quick. Right. Isaiah 28, he says, Whom will he teach knowledge and whom will he make to understand the message? Those just weaned from milk or those just don, uh, br uh, drawn from the breast? For precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line. Here is a little, there is a little. So mm -hmm. he, he talks about that it needs to be taken in order, it needs to be taken in its context, and it, need be, it needs to be measured out, chopped up, and, and given out in a way that people can receive yeah. it. When, when he says that you need to be a worker rightly dividing the word of truth, he talks about, A, like Chuck always says, and you say, know your audience, know the message, and then know your God. And if you know that, you're able to take that word of God and, and chop it up in pieces that they can digest it. So whether you're teaching adults or whether you're teaching kids or whether you're teaching little kids, they're receiving the whole milk of the word in a form that they could eat it. And that's what Calvary Chapel is famous for. And that's why effective Calvary Chapel and effective teaching is just sticking to the word of God. You don't need nothing more than that. You know, you know what blew me away back in the, when I went to Calvary Chapel is that everybody was together. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the, the kids had their own place, but everybody came to hear Chuck. And when they hear Chuck, they started going here and going there. And the message got out, you know, to the, to actually to the cities, to the country. Chuck never expected to do that. People always back my, you know, they're actually backbiting Chuck. You know, Chuck never wanted to be famous. He didn't even want to have Calvary Chapel. He went there in Santa Ana because they asked him to come. 25 people were there, and they wanted to close down the church. So he went. Kay didn't want to go. So Kay prayed about it, and finally she said, okay, Chuck, let's go. So they went. And out of those 25 people, I mean, 100 people, 200 people pretty soon, we had to buy the corner. You know, and we bought the corner, and then the tent was up, and from the tent, they just exploded. And from the tent, two years later, they built a building, and it continued to explode. You know, today, if you see it, it's dead. Yeah. You know, it's real sad because, you know, he did so much for so many people. And some people have spit in his face, and that's not right. Mm -hmm. I think that, you know, Jesus, 
is the one that has given us that that whole scripture that we are to love people. And at, at, you know, and when I think of that, I look at what Chuck did with people that hated him, mm-hmm. you know, and then he loved them. And that's why I'm here. That's why we're all here, because of the Word of God, because the Bible says, what, love your neighbor as yourself. What, what do you think about stuff like that? Well, you know, I think that the example, and you've given us so much of the history, you kind of were talking to the congregation recently about it, about, about Calvary Chapel um, and its origins. And for us that, that know the background as well, it is phenomenal, because it's not of a, a man-made creation. It is um, a God-fearing man being led by the Spirit of God and not creating anything, just going to the source, and that is the Word of God. That's why we keep saying this. It was the Word of God that changed and transformed his life. You've heard Pastor Chuck in his ministry of he went through frustrating years of ministry. He laughs and talks about when he would have enough topical sermons to keep him for about two Two years years at a place, (laughs) and then he'd have to leave. Um, and it wasn't until he um, found uh, outlines, of, uh, Griffith Thomas, I believe yeah. it was, mm-hmm. um, through First John or the Book of Romans, yeah. um, and he's like, wow, like, you know, just expounding upon the Scripture, mm-hmm. which is expository he teaching. He taught First John, the first sermon. First John, yeah. you know, there's sermons for days. Mm-hmm. You just let the Word of God yeah. um, teach, and that's what Pastor Rawl does, and that's what we do. And there's times to do topical studies. There's times to do other things. But when you do expository teaching, I, I really feel that the, the Lord just blesses His Word. What, what you're doing is you're taking, because we're, you're right now, you're teaching through the book of Haggai right now. How many churches are teaching through the book of Haggai? But there's lessons to be, be found in them, yeah. practical lessons. And those are the, the richness, uh, that's the richness of the Word of God. When you allow it just to expand and you step out by faith and you're being used by God, it it, you don't have to create a message. Um, the message is brought straight from the Word of God, and there's no striving in ministry, and the people are blessed. Like, we are um, the fruit of ministry from Pastor Chuck, from yourself, and all of those that have gone before us, of encouraging us to know the fullness of Scripture, to know Genesis to Revelation, to understand how these books all fit together, and they're complementary to one another. When Chuck would teach on the book of Genesis, um, you would be have things that would ex- like um, complement from the New Testament. Same thing with the New Testament. You say, well, this was fulfilled in the book of Genesis or the book of Deuteronomy. This is you were t- teaching us the other day on um, on the the temptation of Christ, right? In Matthew chapter four, and when Jesus is speaking, he is, uses what Deuteronomy chapter eight. You know, there's a psalm that's spoken of there because when you have a full picture of Scripture you're going to see that you have a solidified faith and you have this hope that um, keeps you. And, and that's why I think one of the great um, aspects of the Calvary Chapel movement is the Word of God. Yeah, you know, and uh, I remember with Chuck, uh, Greg, and all of us, you know, we used to go up to the mountains or where we would be. He always put out the scriptures. He would speak to us out of the scriptures. And he, make us, he made us understand, look, this is what's going to keep your church alive. This is what's going to keep you alive. And if you don't, Take this and memorize it, read it, and live by it. He said, you'll have no church. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, you guys have seen that too, haven't you? Yeah, I mean, it's been modeled. I think um, what, I think expositional teaching is amazing, obviously, for the congregation as a church as a whole, but it also is great, it's for the pastor because it keeps you Mm -hmm. in the Word of God and it checks you and it keeps you disciplined and it keeps you in the text. It keeps you from the temptation of uh, riding hobby horses and things that you want to talk about that are relevant to your life. And it keeps you, it just keeps you safe and it keeps you you close to the heart of God. Let's say you're teaching uh, mm-hmm. in Sunday school. I mean, yeah. how are you going to teach them expository teaching mm-hmm. or just a Bible study? The, the Word of God is the, is, is the text itself. It's the message. And so, again, the simplicity of going line upon line um, and breaking, breaking it down to their life. I mean, Scott was just talking about knowing your audience. You're not going to teach a child the same way you teach an adult. Um, so I think it, one, one of the things, too, that makes Calvary Chapel unique is the trust and the sufficiency of Scripture, teaching line upon line, but also the reliance upon the Holy Spirit. You and I have talked in the back multiple times how you could prepare a lesson, but a lot of times in first, second, first service, second yeah. 
service and third service, the application is different because mm -hmm. there's different people. Right. So you got to put together your message, but you also have to be open to the Holy Spirit and how he would give you application for the people that are in right. front of you. Right. So mm -hmm. I think that's important. Scott, too. what do you think? Uh, I, I, I agree with you. I mean, I remember when we first started ministry, you would always tell me, yeah, you teach, uh, teach through the New Testament. And then as I taught through the whole New Testament, I don't want to go back again. I started going through the Old Testament and actually kids dug it. If you if you know how to break it down and take those 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 messages and take those those lessons learned in the Old Testament, there's so much. The Bible says the whole word of God gives us counsel and direction. So right now on Sunday mornings, we're going through Second Kings. You know, we've gone all the way through the New Testament, all the way up to Second Kings, and we'll finish it till we finish in Malachi and go back through it again. And we're gonna keep doing that, just like Chuck taught us and you taught us. So yeah. how do you do that, Sean? You know, I think um, all of us have built an appetite of the Word of God in our own lives, and then it becomes... Individually. This, yeah, and individually, like Wade says, it kind of keeps you in check. Some of my greatest memories of ministry is being here, being under your teaching, and then uh, Pastor you and Pastor Dale would say, these are some books to know. And I always think about the Book of Romans and the Book of Ephesians, and... They, you guys encouraged me to go through Chuck Smith in depth, mm -hmm. which is expository as well, but it's just even a little bit. So when we say expository teaching, it could be like um, Book of Romans chapter one all the way through and mm -hmm. chapter two all the way through in the next study. But in depth, you know, you're going like three <laughs> verses, four verses, yeah. you know, maybe 12 verses. Yeah. And Chuck, at that time, his Book of Romans, the in-depth was about 120 studies. Mm -hmm. um, and when I first started ministry, they were still on tapes. They hadn't all yeah. been transferred over to um, CD Jeez. yet. So I had this big box of tapes, and I would listen to them as I would be cleaning the restrooms or whatever. But some of that is the most valuable time of my walk with the Lord, especially in the beginning. It was building a foundation. It was giving me an understanding of a full picture of the Word of God. And then being under your teaching and how you would break down raw, like um, the the timeline of Genesis chapters one through 11 and 12 through 50, and all the way up to the time of Christ. And seeing that full picture really helps you grasp like how the word of God is all put together. So to me personally, it's so valuable. And so when you get built up by good teaching, it becomes, that you have to have the gifts of the Holy Spirit to sure. teach and be a pastor. Um, but the application, whether you're not a pastor or teacher, the ability to be able to communicate the Word of God, but as a pastor and teacher, it allows you to teach with passion, with direction, with solidified truth, um, because you've been, you invested in that time, you received, and then you're able to give. Yeah, you know, in-depth studies, what I've learned in-depth studies is that you have a topic in every verse. Mm -hmm. When you break it down, you can teach them one verse or five verses, whatever it is, mm -hmm. or a whole chapter. Mm -hmm. But in-depth studies, I've learned a lot, just you know, two or three verses, break it down topically, and then you, what you can do is you can break that book, and you, you can, like Chuck, 120 studies. You know, uh, you know. Today, I don't think people have that motivation. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't have that that zeal that we have. You mm -hmm. know, because it's a new generation. Mm -hmm. So I say, what are we going to do in the next five, ten years, where kids, mm -hmm. young people, don't want to hear the mm -hmm. word of God? Mm -hmm. You know, they want to say, okay, give me to eat, and that's the end of that. I want to go out and play. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the mm -hmm. things that are happening today. Yeah, yeah you you, you, ha you can't give into that though. You can't as yeah. a pastor. You can't give into that. Because it's it's a temptation and it's viewing um, it's viewing the world through a worldly lens and not through not being being heavenly minded. Heavenly minded yeah. I um I just got done teaching through Colossians in depth, and uh, some of the younger people would say, "Man, I didn't realize in two verses you could teach a whole study through two mm -hmm. verses." Um, and so I, I, I don't know, man, I, I believe in the power of the Word of God. I believe in the inspiration of it. And I believe all we have to do is unleash it and, um, and the, let the Word of God do, have do you the work the of God. Yeah, absolutely. I think our church is seeing the fruit yeah. of um, even your consistency in, in teaching through the Bible on Wednesdays and Sundays um, is, is amazing to me. And I, I try not to forget, like when I first started coming here before I knew anybody, I remember watching you on a Wednesday night and it blew me away. You you broke down the entire Bible from the Pentateuch <laughs> to the, the poetical books, to the prophets, um, into the gospels, I into the epistles, <laughs> and then the revelation, into revelation. And I was like, 
what the heck was that? <laughs> just quick off the hip. And I'm like, I need to be able to do that. And so um, I, I, there's got to be people. What, well, the point I'm making is there's yeah, got to be yeah. people in the congregation yeah. that the Lord is touching like that still because the, because the word of God is still being yeah. taught. And so we have to stand firm. We have to stand strong. Like w- right before Paul died, he told Timothy, he says, I charge you, I command you. Mm-hmm. And it's like the, the word picture is like in a courtroom before mm-hmm. God is his witness in Jesus Christ, yeah. preach the word, yeah. be ready in season and out of season when it's popular, when it's not popular, just yeah. do it. I mean, you think about it, that's a, Paul's getting ready to die. Yeah. And that's the last thing he tells them, yeah. teach the word. And but see, so, that's, that's something that churches don't do. Mm-hmm. They don't pass the baton, <laughs> mm-hmm. you know, it ceases. Mm-hmm. And, and once you stop passing that baton, mm-hmm. then there's no more race. Mm-hmm. Yeah, That's the whole thing. There's sure. no more race. And so if there's no more race, there's no more hope. Mm-hmm. There's no more winners. Yeah, and I sure. think that it's important for us, you know, in the next 5, 10, 25 years, whatever you guys, you know, to really keep that in mind, that you guys got to keep the race going. You know, and that race can only be kept by instructing, by discipline, and training. And that training comes with the teaching of the Word of God so that you can create, actually not create, but you can actually build up disciples, mm-hmm. you know, because we need more disciples than ever before. I mean, I, I just got on the phone with these people. It's incredible what's happening across the country. Mm-hmm. It's incredible. People that are at Calvary Chapel, you know, you think they had learned the Word of God, they're passing on, and, and yet they're getting caught up with the uh, whole movement of music and all these things, and they're just getting up to 15 minutes and saying something beautiful, and then the end comes to, what's gonna happen to, you know, to the Calvary Chapel movement? Yeah, yeah I think that's, you know? yeah. You, you, can't live on, you can't live on snacks, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like, like you said something that, that really kind of resonated with me, Star. what's gonna happen with this future generation that can only handle you know, a few minutes and then they're done. That that's them. They 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 have the appetite mm-hmm. of the things that they eat. Right. They want to be entertained. They'll go after entertainment. They right. won't come after solid word. But right. I know this, just like all of us. Once you get a taste of good food, you want more of that good food. Yeah. And so, if they get 15 minutes of solid good food, they're going to come back for 20 minutes, half hour. I remember Chuck used to teach way over an hour. Yeah, right? most no, an churches, hour and a half. Hour and a half. I, I listen to his studies yeah. every day, and yeah. I'm blown away. I can sit there and I lose track of yeah. time listening uh-huh. to his studies. I yeah. listen this morning, yeah. and uh, I have an appetite for that. But there's some people because they've only been fed 20 minutes, half hour. That's all they can handle. They're starting to fidget after a half yeah. hour, right? Yeah. But when somebody's being ministered to by the Holy Spirit, time flies. You don't care how long you're listening. Yeah. I, I want more. Like I'll go from an hour and 15 minute study to another one because I want to hear the rest of that yeah. study. And so the, appet- the the food you give them dictates the appetite. If right. they want sugar, they'll get sugar. Yeah. If they want meat, they'll go after meat. Yeah. So I, I'm under the firm impression that, yes, people will go after little bits, but the people that really want the word are going to go to a place where they're going to get yeah. fed. The sheep yeah. beget the sheep. So Yeah, I mean, you know, and Chuck also shared with us that in the last days, you know, I mean, this is 50 years ago, mm-hmm. that in the last days there would be not big churches. Mm-hmm. He even, I mean, he was, he was like a mm-hmm. prophesied. Mm-hmm. He says the churches will be entertainment centers, you know. Mm-hmm. He says, but the uh, real centers, teaching the Word of God, you know, you're going to see a decline you know, in real teaching churches, and it's going to kind of come to a place of plateauing. Because the other ones are building up, but they're not solid. Mm-hmm. There's going to be a lot of situation, a lot of problems in these churches, don't you think? Yeah, because you don't want you don't want anything that's built upon a man, man's wisdom. Mm-hmm. It fails. You try to keep up with the fashion, fashions yeah. of the world. They they fade away so quickly, and that's why the word of God is timeless. Yeah. You know, you know, Wade's talking about when he was younger and coming and hearing you expound and, and go through all like Genesis Revelation like that. And then you see the fruit of that too, because I remember as being under your teaching and I would go with Scott to the high school campuses and he'd have this little Bible with like little tiny notes on and he would be able to expound on wherever he was in the text and be able to con- communicate to these kids at lunch. And I remember like going away when I was fresh, like, how do you remember all this stuff? He doesn't have notes, like he has like little couple words written, but it just, it stays in line. And then as years go by, people say the same thing to me. How do you remember so much scripture? They look at Wade, like, how does he understand so much scripture? 
It's not that any of us are special. None of us are. Like you struggle in school. I struggle in school. I still struggle. You struggle in school. Like <laughs> there, there's different things. But when the, the Holy Spirit gets a hold of your life and you really dive into the Word of God, what happens, if you're teaching the Word of God properly, you take the back seat and the Lord goes before you. And, and that's why, let me just share what it says really quick, where it says, in the book of Hebrews, it says, for the word of God is living and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit of joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. And there is no creature hidden from his sight, but all things are naked and open to the eyes of him to whom we must give an account. Mm -hmm. You talk about this as you're prepping, you're, you're getting convicted yourself. You, you want to have the message that God has given to you. And then when you teach the message and you see the impact of it, mm -hmm. you see lives change and transform. You see lives build up. You see uh, people that are in sin get convicted of sin, all because you relied upon the power of God's word because you allow God's word to work in, the, in people's lives. And this is the most valuable thing. Yeah. So when you get um, sidetracked yeah. on doing 10-minute, 15-minute little uh, sayings stories. and stuff, stories, <laughs> It does. It's like it's like the cotton candy illustration, yeah. right? Yeah. It doesn't last. Yeah. So the word of God, it endures forever. It's lasting. It makes you wise beyond your years. Mm. Let's all three of us, all four of us. Why don't you take just a few minutes to tell the people that are listening to it, what should they do in order to get into the word of God? Yeah, I think you have to um, obviously be in a in a church that teaches through the Bible expositionally. Because that's going to encourage you to go through the Bible. In the days we're living in right now, you're not going to survive if you do not have a devotional life. Um, and I get it. Everyone's schedule is different, but there needs to be a time with you alone in God's Word. He desires to have a relationship with you. So you have to be in the Word as a, as a person. I think that's another great thing that comes out of Calvary Chapel's teaching style is it's not just that the church is going through the Bible, but you as an individual uh, adopt that model into your life, going through the Bible. Everybody should be reading through the Bible, and it should be a part of your life. Um, that should be the primary way that God is speaking to you daily. And then when you come to church, God speaks it's to a, you. Yeah. I, I believe firmly in my heart that one of the dangers that the church has fallen into is there's just so many churches right now and you can go wherever you want to go it's kind of like a salad bar a little bit but you need to pray about where god has called you to be and who your pastor is and the work that god has called you to be alongside of um, because god has given you gifts and he wants to use you within that congregation right. and so um the Word of God has to, you have to let it be real in your life. And to know God, you got to spend time with God. you got to spend time alone with His Word. So that, that would be my encouragement. Get in a church that teaches the Bible, but you fall in love with your, your Bible, your, yourself, with God alone. Scott, what would you say? You know, I, I would encourage them on the uh, on the topic of appetite. You know, some people say, well, I'm not really into reading. I'm not really into, you know, uh, there are so many different apps right now. There's so many things like you have to you have to put something in you that's going to stir up your appetite. Um, for me, it's like if I feel like I'm dry in this area, I'll move to another. If I feel like this book's not doing it, then I'll read something that inspires me. So it's me. like from enchiladas to beans. To, yeah, enchiladas <laughs> to beans to tacos, right? But it's there all in the same yeah, plate, yeah. right? Same thing. S same kind yeah. of thing. I, I think it's funny that you're talking about Mexican food because I'm hungry right now. But anyway, you got you got to you got to stir up your appetite. Yeah. Like for instance, if you know, like you're going through the Old Testament, you're feeling kind of dry in that. Step away for a minute, you know, and, and go into the New Testament where you find yourself. Oh my gosh, I just I just read about that and it's going to make you go back to it i'm in the old testament and the new testament at the same time right yeah. now teaching it and studying it. i'm in genesis from my own personal studies and i'm in acts because we're getting yeah. ready to study but yeah. i was already in it anyway but then we're teaching through second kings and through the book of luke so i'm in like all over the place right yeah. now but all of it like he said is kind of like this so i always tell people if you don't feel like reading you need to pray that god will give you desire to want to read yeah. If you don't feel like reading or praying, then you need to like worship the Lord until it gets your mind worked upon the things of God, and then you'll get in your word. Or you get a CD, praying. you can hear. You get the Bible. a CD. There's so many different aspects. You're without excuse mm -hmm. of you know why I'm just not feeling it right now. Yeah. And going back to that feeling yeah. thing, you need to stir up the appetite, and just like you do with food, yeah. it's even more important with the spirit to stir up the appetite cool. for the Word of God. So. And Sean, you know, right now in the world we're living in, we are in a, a battle of truth yep. on every platform, yep. and with social media and the ways of being able to distort truth and reality, you have to know truth. 
you have to realize that the enemy always takes things out of context. And in our culture today, um, there are so many people that are trying to blur the lines uh, in government and, um, you know, media companies and stuff. And you have to really understand, like, we, we are in a battle. There is a battle of truth. And so to know, keep things in context, the way that you can understand context is knowing the whole Bible. <laughs> like, if somebody um, wrote you a letter and you just started in the middle of it and didn't see what they said in the beginning or at the end, mm -hmm. you'd be confused, yep. you know? So if you look, if this is God's word to men. And if you just be, you know, open your Bible and just like, okay, I'm gonna start yeah. here. Like, you're gonna, not gonna understand like who wrote it, when was it written, what was the purpose? Like all of those valuable um, breakdowns you can do, who wrote it, when, What's the application? Like all these kind of things will highly in, um, strengthen you in your walk with the Lord. So I would say that uh, I would cha challenge you to understand the Word of God in context, mm -hmm. to truly know what it means. Um, in the book of Acts chapter 17, uh, the Berean church, uh, uh, it says this, uh, when it talks about when Paul was doing ministry in Berea, it says, these were all fair-minded than those are in Thessalonica when they received the word of God with all readiness, and they searched the scriptures daily to find out whether the things were so. So the word of God was taught by the leader, by the pastor, and they're like, wow, this is amazing. And then he challenges, take this home, read it yourself, mm -hmm. and, and make sure that I'm what I'm saying right. to you is in context, that it is true. Yeah. There's so much value in that, especially when there's false teachers out there. Make sure that you line up what is being taught by the word of God, because the word of God does not turn back void, and it will fit together like a puzzle. I remember Chuck Smith used to say, if your interpretation of the Bible makes God seem unfair, unjust, or any of these other characteristics, then your interpretation of the Bible is wrong. You are reading it out of context. And so when you understand context of the Bible, it will change things for you in such a powerful way in your life. So, um, so one of the things that we all agree on it's the Bible, mm -hmm. the Word of God. People need to spend time in the Word of God. Know your audience if you're going to teach it. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't know your audience, how are you going to reach them, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that Chuck always, even at the conferences, when he would come, they put him first to, and then at the last to teach because he always had a message for the ministers, mm -hmm. a message for his audience. No matter where I went with him, he always had a, he always, I, I, Chuck, man, how do you know your audience like that? He says, hey, I've been praying, I've been studying. He says, and then when they call me to go there, I come first to that place and I look at my audience. And then I can say, okay, this audience mm -hmm. here, this, 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 that, and then he speaks to them mm -hmm. from the Word of God. And that's, I think that's a problem today in the church, you know, yeah. that people are just getting up there and, and speaking, you know, without studying, without anything like that. And the people are getting cheated mm. from the Word of God. So I think that all of us agree with this whole situation about teaching the Word of God, knowing God's Word. And Hebrews 4.12, like you read, mm -hmm. you know, that is it. Mm -hmm. We have to teach our children. We have to be a time with our wives praying, and they're reading the Word of God too. And I think for Calvary Chapel here, you know, I'm praying for Calvary Chapel Diamond Bar. You know, I have a couple of comforts coming up and I'm thinking, Lord, what do you want to say? Not to them. What do you want to say to me so I can say to them? Because I don't want to just get up to my computer and go through a sermon that I already preached. I want I want always new sermons. I want God to really speak to you. Others, why teach? Why preach? Mm -hmm. You know, might as well put our little robot up there, mm -hmm. you know. But I think that when we really spend time in the Word and we know that God's speaking, then we're going to be able to go on our computers or iPads and make sure when we read that sermon, God can speak to you. He's done so many things for me. Mm -hmm. You know, He's just started giving me insight to that sermon to kind of modify it or to make it. Check you through that time. I'd be sitting in the airplane, and he'd be working on his sermon three-pointer, and then he would kind of meditate a little bit, and then he'd write a couple more things down. Mm -hmm. And then when I hear the message, I go, wow, the Lord gave him that message for his audience. He knew his audience. And I think that's important. Any one of you that teach, you know your audience. We want to thank you so much for being with us. And I want to ask uh, Wade a question. How come you're getting smaller in the sky? You know, you used to be bigger than him. What happened? <laughs> My well, chair is higher. It's he's he's just more of a man than me. Oh. Yeah, well, there you go. Thanks for being with us. God bless you guys.